I am super excited about. This was, uh, I told Peter uh, as I welcomed him up, this is the one pitch that opened my eyes in an almost shocking way to a problem that I really care about but didn't know existed. And I'll be curious if you have the same sort of uh, response. Thank you. Uh, I'm Peter with Mountain Flow Eco Wax. We are based in Carbondale, Colorado, and we make North America's number one plant-based ski wax. So as it turns out, just about all the ski wax in the world is made from petroleum, which means a couple things. First, we're drilling oil to make ski wax, and secondly, everything you put on your skis ends up in the snowpack into our rivers and lakes. In the US last year, there was two and a half million pounds of ski wax introduced into the, <clears throat> into the snowpack. Just here in Steamboat, there's 40,000 pounds of petroleum-based ski wax introduced into the snowpack. This afternoon when it was raining, all I could think about was that 40,000 pounds that had either already gotten into the Yampa or was now running off the hill into town. Right now, there's really no eco-friendly ski waxes on the market. The EPA has taken notice of this. In the last two years, they've opened 53 separate investigations into wax companies. They've actually embargoed wax from Swix and Toco, the world's largest ski wax manufacturer, and held it at the border. So not allowed into the US market. So needless to say, there's a huge opportunity for an eco-friendly ski wax company. In general, in the outdoor industry, sustainability is the hottest thing going. Outside Magazine really summed it up best when they said, get green or die trying. Some large retailers have also gotten on board. REI just came out with a set of strict sustainability guidelines. It outlines everything that can be used in all the products in their store. There's actually a specific section just for ski wax. We're one of the few companies that already meet and exceed all of those guidelines. And as such, we've been meeting with the buyer and we're hopefully gonna be in some REI stores this winter. And then lastly, this opportunity expands globally. International regulation bodies have been cracking down throughout the world. And we've already seen ski wax companies in the US and abroad shut down in the last two years because of these regulations. So what have we done? Over the last two years, we've created a ski wax that is made entirely with plants. It's 100% biodegradable, and it works just as well as a conventional ski wax. We ran a bunch of controlled performance tests last year. The speed and durability is within 1% of a conventional ski wax. We've actually been around for the past three years. Uh, we've been selling more niche wax products, um, but it has allowed us to lay a really strong foundation. We've got a great network of retailers throughout the US and Canada, including backcountry.com. And at this point, we've really reached an inflection point. Between the sustainability trends and the EPA embargo, the market is wide open. And with our new wax, we've got the perfect product to capitalize on this opportunity. We just signed on with two of the largest wax distributors in the game and now have access to 5,000 plus ski shops between the US and Canada. We're also talking to the resort community. As it turns out, rental shops in resorts are the largest consumers of wax. They go through thousands of pounds, waxing all of their skis every night. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we were down in Denver. We met with Altera. As I'm sure you know, they now own Steamboat. They're very interested in bringing us on as their preferred wax partner. Uh, we also have uh, a website. We sell all of our products direct to consumer online, as well as an Amazon store. Fortunately for us, we don't have any direct competitors. We are launching what will be North America's only plant-based ski wax. There's a few indirect competitors. Uh, Pearl, which is based here in Colorado, um, they make a non-fluorinated petroleum wax. So fluorocarbons. Uh, the most toxic thing in ski wax, known carcinogen, also known as a forever chemical. So once it's in the environment, it just doesn't break down. So Pearl, 
non-fluoro, but still 100% petroleum based. And then the GPS Phantom, which some of you may have heard of, one-time base treatment, doesn't shed into the environment, but it is made exclusively with fluorocarbons. So I'm here today asking for $250,000. With this money, we can establish Mountain Flow as the name in eco-friendly ski wax. In five years, plant-based ski wax is gonna be in every ski shop throughout the world. But as a first mover, if we act now, we can establish Mountain Flow as a leader in this space. The large majority of this raise is gonna be used uh, for marketing. We need to quickly ramp sales and gain market share. My background is in digital marketing for outdoor companies. Uh, I've led digital strategy for folks like Smith Optics, Black Diamond, Ibex, Real Raven. So I've got the plan built and just need the money to execute. Also wanted to give you a, a quick look at what else we've got coming down the product pipeline. Um, going into ski shops for the last three years, everybody always asks, yep, we'll buy your wax, but you know, where are your bike products? So we've already started to develop these and we're launching in the spring. All of our current ski retailers also sell bikes. So we've got the distribution network established. Same, same situation in the surf wax industry. 95% of surf wax is made from petroleum. Surfers have to wax every single day because all the wax they put on their board goes directly into the ocean. Lastly, garment wax. Canvas jackets are exploding right now, led by folks like Filson and Fjallraven. They're trying to come out with a plant-based version of their wax. All of their jackets have to be waxed to have any waterproofness. Um, they haven't been able to figure it out. They've actually already reached out to us to make this work. There's the fam. <laughs> um, so first and foremost, we are here to raise capital. Um, we've got a great opportunity, but we need money to make it happen. At the same time, we understand that this may not be a fit for everybody in the room. So we're also looking for industry connections. This business is built on relationships. So if you guys know folks in the resort community, in retail, uh, media connections, come find me after the show. I'd love to talk. Yeah, Amanda gets the first question. <laughs> if, if we're done. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Is your wax um, patented or proprietary in any way? Yeah, so we are starting to explore patents for it. Peter, what's the market opportunity? How big is the ski wax industry globally? Uh, yeah, so the, globally it's 130 million. What about surf? <coughs> Surf's about. 25 million, and that's just for wax. Okay. Uh, how does the, the price of your product compare to what's currently available? Yeah, so price is pretty competitive. Um, it's just a little bit more expensive than your typical wax, but we haven't had anyone flinch at the price. Like penny, pennies more, right? I mean, it's yeah. pretty, pretty nominal. So what ski shops are doing is they're bringing it in and offering it as an upsell. Right now, if you go to a ski shop, you drop your skis off to get tuned, you've got no idea what's going on there and you have no choice. So if we give them some POP for the counter, it says, hey, for an extra five bucks, do you guys want to get Mountain Flow made here in Colorado, made with plants, it works just as well. So actually, shops are making more money by using our wax. Jamie's plus one. Yeah. Uh, are you looking into doing any Nordic kick wax? So we haven't looked into kick wax, but we do make skin wax. So a lot of plastic skis now have a permanently affixed kicker skin underneath your foot. And so we do make two types of skin wax. Please. Where and how is it made? Do you have a Well, I can't give you all of the secrets, but <laughs> um, some of it is made here in Colorado. The rest of it we use wax manufacturers. We send them our formula and then they source the material make it for it. I don't know why I'm asking this question. Is it edible? 
Okay, so funny story. Um, <laughs> quick, I promise. Uh, my father was in town watching some of the kids that you guys just saw. I had just cooked up some wax, wax for one of our uh, clients, and I hadn't fully cleaned out the pot. He didn't realize that it was used for wax. Reheated some macaroni and cheese for my two-year-old daughter. I came out, she was halfway through the bowl. She loved it. <laughs> she was <doing> fine. Um, <laughs> So, yes, it's edible, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty outstanding note to end on. Yeah, right on. Thanks a lot.